What's going on toy fam? Project Piper Customs here and I wanted to bring you this little video talking about custom props. Okay, so this little custom quickie video and we're going to be talking about props. Now as we know with toy photography, the big elaborate displays can be made up of huge dioramas, diorama pieces or sometimes they can just have a simple backdrop and just filled with props. Now props can be acquired on a number of ways. As you know, a lot of action figures come with their own props and accessories, some really good ones. Um, and also there is dollhouse miniatures, which we turn to sometimes. They're not always in scale, but they work uh, some, on some setups, they work brilliantly. And they have a whole variety of different things you can get. And some props we make ourselves. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's right, we make our own homemade props. Okay, and that's what we're going to be focusing on here. Okay, so recently you might have seen, if you follow me on my Instagram, I've done a series of shots with uh, Casey in this new RAF, mainly with this new RAF, and I've given it an outdoor setting. So I wanted to go over some of the things that I've used and some of the things that I've made, uh, specifically with these trees and obviously this trash can. All right, so once we come back, I'm going to get you right into it. Okay, before we get into the actual customization of some of these props, I just want you to go over a couple of things which you can actually buy online or from your local hobby store, depending on where you are, uh, that can help dress up an outdoor scene, uh, especially in like a woodland or forest or park area uh, in your display or your toy photography. And uh, one of the things I really love is this uh, architectural moss. Okay, the link will be in the description, but you can buy it from eBay. All right, and you get a couple of shades in here but especially you get this darker moss and you can pull it apart and you can scatter it however you want, creating some shrubbery. You can even glue it to different parts of your background, whatever you need to, to give it that sort of, you know, just uh, moss, you know, just plant life growing wherever you want it to grow. And you've got a couple of different shades here and this is really, really good gear. So highly recommend getting some of this. And the other thing which I found works amazing as a, a base, as a floor for your outdoor setting uh, is this, which is railroad medium brown ballast okay so this will be the stuff that they sprinkle uh, in between railroad tracks to obviously give it a uh, give it that look or the stony look either side and in between and this is a wood uh, from woodland scenics again off of ebay and yeah so this will be the ballast for that and just because it's so fine okay you can easily just spread it around okay just spread it around it gets a bit messy but as long as you've got something sharp you can scoop it back up into you know uh, a tupperware uh, tupperware tray or, or tub of your choosing so i've got a couple of bags of this and this stuff's really really good um to give you that sort of ground dirt um illusion okay so just a couple of things there that might help you in your displaying that you can pick up from ebay and i'll leave the links in the description so let's get into the rest Okay, so these are a couple of things that I made recently, uh, which I was heavily inspired by someone on the Facebook group of, uh, his name is It's Dante on Instagram. And uh, yeah, a really nice guy and amazing toy photographer as well. So definitely hit him up. I'll leave a link to his uh, Instagram in the description. Um, but yeah, it's I got this inspiration from him. Now this particular technique, I believe has been around for a while, so I'm not sure where he got it from, or if he did actually get it from someone else, I'm just letting you know who I pulled the inspiration from. And these are for tree trunks okay now these are extremely simple to make as you can see they don't look like much you know straight off the bat all right but if you have them dotted about in your display and they're out of focus and you get the right lighting on them they work perfect okay and they really if you can create a few of them they really give you that uh, sense of depth that depth of field within your uh, toy photography okay and all these are essentially is uh, the ones that I used in particular are shipping tubes all right, as you can see, they're just cardboard shipping tubes. Okay, and uh, these come in, these are, believe it or not, the shipping tubes that um, contained my brick wallpaper for the sewer diorama. <laughs> I got a few rolls of it. Uh, they came up, uh, I see, like that. So when I had to pull them out, I was left with these, and I thought, well, I could make use of these somehow. So I just kept hold of them, and then, lo and behold, they work perfect as trees. Good size as well. But I have another one here. Okay, this one actually still contains stuff in it, so I haven't used it yet. But here we go, is another shipping tube. And um, yeah, so you can get a decent thickness to it compared to those two. And I probably will turn this into another tree at some point down the line. But let me go over and show you what I did with these. So yes, essentially these are shipping tubes. So I just popped the two white end caps off, peeled off all the labels that needed to, so it just gave me a smooth surface. And then essentially, all you need to do is just get your glue gun, 
and quite a few glue sticks because you will go through it okay and you just run streaks up the entire length okay the more uneven the better as you can see it gets a bit wobbly but I have shaky hands anyway um, but yeah the more uneven the better and you just keep creating streaks all the way up breaking it up you know you can see there's a stop mark where I carried on afterwards and just keep going on and on mix it up a bit you know swirl it around get it uneven you keep going all the way up until you eventually meet back with yourself all right and i'll throw up a picture again it's a picture i pulled from dante himself i personally didn't get a chance to document the progress process of this because I, I just threw these together in an hour i just wanted them quick for a scene okay so this is his picture all right so as you can see it's literally just beads of super glue or uh, hot glue rather all the way up okay and then you just throw some paint on and i used a um deco arts burnt umber just covered the whole thing in deco art burnt umber brown you can go for a dark brown whatever takes your fancy and then even though it's not really that noticeable i did go in with a lighter tone and just dry brushed across all the streaky areas just to mix it up a bit and give it a bit of variation in color okay and i did that with this one too and then bob's your uncle fan is your aunt we got ourselves some tree trunks, all right? And as I say, once you put them in your display and uh, you give them that depth of field, all right, and then you move your focus of your toy photography onto your subject. And if your tree's in the background, they're gonna be slightly out of focus, but when the light hits them, they're gonna give you the illusion that you're standing behind some trees, all right? And you can make as many of these as you want. Okay, so you can either use kitchen roll or paper towel inner tubes, other than shipping tubes, or you can even stack together some toilet roll tubes, glue them around. And there you go, you've got yourself a nice long tube to uh, create some tree trunks with. And that is it. It's as simple as that. And these took me all of about an hour. All right, that's literally all it took. So, uh, yep, you can get creative with all sorts around the house. But, yeah, anything around the house can be used. Uh, you just obviously let your imagination go wild. And there we have it. That is the trees. All right. So let's move on and talk about this beauty okay moving on to the bin now this is 100 percent scratch built okay that means just built it from the ground up using materials that i had acquired and uh, yeah essentially this is purely just mesh wire and balsa wood all right and i use some wire mesh which i acquired from ebay again link will be in the description and yeah so i basically wanted to shoot the infamous scene from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a 1990 movie of Raphael and Casey fighting in the park, and especially the scene where he clubs Raphael with the cricket bat and he goes flying headfirst into the trash can. Iconic scene, and I wanted to shoot it badly now that I had these two figures in hand. So uh, I, I went through the options of how to acquire something that even looked like the bin, so I started you know, scouring the internet, and uh, I did land on one of these, and I bought one just to see scaling wise whether it'll work or not it didn't <laughs> this is essentially a pen or pencil desk tidy or caddy whatever you want to call it um for your desk you put your pens and pencils and all that shit you know you, you get the idea um but because it had the mesh look and looked like a trash can i just wanted to see if it would be a decent size and unfortunately this is way too big now you could acquire one of these and literally just get some snippers and cut the mesh because this is a perfect mesh all right got a bit of rigidity you know flexibility and it's not too rigid um you'll be able to you know contort it and conform it into the shape you want but as it stands the size it is was just way too big sadly so i had to hunt didn't have that idea at the time uh but i went and hunted for my own mesh and i came across this stuff okay which is right here as you can see it is very 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 thin as you can see it's peeling away and that was the only downside about working with this stuff is that, of course, once you've uh, freed it from its bonds, if you will, it will happily decide to peel away from you. But I managed to get one sheet of this, and this was A4, and uh, A4 size. And what was great about this gear, uh, even though obviously it was flexy and I could move it around however I wanted, one edge of it came pre-crimped. Okay, you see this edging here where it's all hooped over? Okay, one edge of the mesh sheet came that way because that was one of the struggles um, when I was making this. Like, how am I going to do that? The rim or the base? There was all these pieces of puzzle I had to work out. And just looking at this edging, I was like, perfect. This will be the top of the bin. I don't need to do anything, you know. So this is wonderful stuff. Uh, so I cut it accordingly to get the scaling. But obviously now that I have built it, I can give you some measurements to get it in this scale if you're so inclined or inspired by this to make one yourself. Okay. And so the height and 
uh, diameter are going to be here. Okay, so essentially I just wanted it about a waist height in terms of the scaling because I did all this by eyeball, no measurements whatsoever. I just wanted, to, I just basically went right. I want it this tall. Okay, so I got a mesh, and I was like, right, I want it about there, and then of course I just wrapped it around, and I thought, mm, I want it about here, and I kept closing it and closing it and closing it until I got the uh, diameter that I, you know, looked right in my eyes, and then I just went ahead and cut it. Okay, uh, and for the base itself, I uh, took a template out of foam, uh, knowing kind of what size I wanted. So I drew out a template on foam, cut it out as a disc, and then I used balsa wood. I used a thin sheet of balsa wood, cut two discs of balsa wood out and stacked them together. Okay, glued them together, sanded them down just so it was a bit smoother, and then that gave me a base. And essentially, all I did was I took the mesh, made sure that my crimped layer edge was uh, facing upwards because I wanted it to be the top of my uh, my bin and then essentially just contorted it around to get it a shape you know decent uh, rounded shape and I super glued it okay just super glued it all the way to the edge wrapping it all the way around until we got to where it met and when it met obviously because it's flexible it's springing open so I had to bring it together and I used some masking tape just to collar it like that Just so it stayed together and just all moved all the way down here as you can see this is my glue line and i just simply just glued it in place i did a section at a time so i did this section waited for it to cure and then once it cured i moved my choke collar down and then of course i moved on and glued some other sections until eventually the entire thing was glued and it held okay and what's great is you don't have to worry about being messy or neat when it comes to this because no matter how messy you get with the super glue it will act like a weld obviously these bins are you know attack welded together when they wrap the mesh around and of course with some paint it just looks like just some rough welding okay so it sells it on that option too and i just used a high viscous industrial super glue but you can use whatever glue takes your fancy i left it to cure overnight i added uh, a cut a thin strip of masking tape okay and i just sent it all the way around okay just to hide where the uh, i glued the wire mesh to the base all right and then that just cool finished it off and then i just added some paint and i used a citadel paint i uh, used a dark sort of like an orangey brown so it will give it some rust and also a dark chrome silver just to tone down the shininess and shimmer of uh, of this stuff and you just dry brushed it on with a sponge brush and there we had it we had a complete trash bin all right now materials wise in terms of actually filling it with makeshift rubbish as you can see in here, we have some little miniature props. So we have the coffee can from, and we also have a beer beer bottle in here somewhere, of uh, from I believe it was the Necker Preacher figures. Okay, so we have a couple of beer bottles in there. We have a cigarette packet, which was actually a little print out from my good friend Tom from Tom's Dioramas. We have a couple of we have a miniature Coca Cola can, just in there. There we go. That was a um, dollhouse miniature, miniature prop. We have some little packets of sweets. All right. And we have some other bits and bobs in there. But essentially all of this is just different materials. Again, I had around the house. So within there, oh, and we also have a little newspaper printout, which was just great. It's just a little bit of folded paper with a printout on it. Scrumple it up, shove it in, and there we go. But majority of this is literally just pieces of tissue paper. This is just scrumpled a piece of tissue, uh, some flyer, just a random flyer, but because it had some green color to it, you know, just gave it a bit and mixed it up. We have some crumpled up pieces of newspaper. Okay, some brown envelope, just tore off the lip of a brown envelope and started crushing it up and rolling it around, giving me some different variety of stuff. We have some chewing gum foil paper. Okay, just to mix it up with some foil. And then also we have, if I can find any, we have some clear plastic baggy in here as well. Uh, yeah, you might be able to see some in there. <laughs> but there's all various doodads in there. So basically I took all these different materials and I just layered it just to cut the crimples of, you know, of each. Just kept going round and round and round until it all filled up. 
just broke it up with some different colors and uh, different textures like with foil, with tissue, with hard paper, random mixed in with props, with some plastic. So it just like a variety of different rubbish has gone in and uh, different sizes as well. Some were really tight, balled up, some were loose. Okay, and that just gave the illusion that this was filled with complete rubbish. Okay, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And that is all that was needed to make a Central Park trash can from scratch. Okay, nothing too harsh, nothing too hard and time consuming. Just, you know, took about three hours in total. Just, just spent an afternoon, took my time with it. And the end result is exactly what I was after. Okay, so yeah, that will be it, folks. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, just breaking down some simple props that you can make yourself. I'll leave links in the description for different materials, and I also show you a behind the scenes. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you a little behind the scenes uh, of the setup I uh, I shot for the shot at the end, so you get to see the actual uh, display itself with all of these different items in use and uh, how you can utilize them yourself so uh, but yeah that'll be it thanks for watching um if you enjoyed it please give this uh, a like please hit the subscribe button if you have enjoyed it and if i've earned your subscription that'd be great and uh definitely uh, check out my instagram and facebook at project piper customs and that'll be it from me i need a cup of tea thanks again and until next time